Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be sharing with you the five reasons or five factors that contribute to hypothalamic amenorrhea, also known as loss of menstrual cycle for three to six months. I've explained this in my other videos, so if you are new to this channel, first of all, welcome. I hope you enjoy the videos that come up. I highly recommend watching the past couple videos that I have posted on hypothalamic amenorrhea slash weight gain. If you or a loved one are going through hypothalamic amenorrhea or if you're going through some kind of irregular menstrual cycle or loss of menstrual cycle, I highly, highly recommend you to read through the book No Period, Now What by Dr. Nicola Rinaldi. She is a PhD researcher who has a lot of experience in this field and she's helped thousands of women gain their periods back. So any questions that you have about what I recommend you do, how you can get your period back, these videos that I make are very helpful, but it also helps for you to do your research and to read the books that have the research in them. So highly recommend getting No Period Now What. It's like $20 and you can get it straight to your iPhone, your um, iPhone, Kindle, computer, um, and you can also buy a paperback, but I definitely didn't want to wait, so I just got the digital copy. So anyway, the information that I'm going to be sharing actually derives from that book. So the five factors are, are outlined in No Period, Now What? But I think that they are extremely well put together and I completely agree with them. So I'm just going to go through them with you and also share with you how I can relate to these five factors and how it has contributed to me personally not having my menstrual cycle. There are multiple ways that a woman can lose her menstrual cycle, one of which is hypothalamic amenorrhea. So while hypothalamic amenorrhea is the technical term for not having your menstrual cycle, there are actually a lot of ways that you do, can lose your menstrual cycle, such as with PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. But in hypothalamic amenorrhea, which is a component of the female athlete triad, signals that are supposed to be sent out out by the brain's hormonal and control center, the hypothalamus, are shut off or turned way down such that no egg grows, no ovulation or egg release occurs, and hence there's no need for a period. So by surveying a bunch of people who have gone through the same exact thing, it seems that there are five factors that are really re relevant to this condition. Eating habits, exercise, weight slash weight loss, stress, and genetics. HA, hypothalamic amenorrhea, is reversible in most cases. So let's go over the first one, which is eating habits. So caloric and food group restriction are very common in women with HA. They performed a survey of over 300 women who had HA at one time and found that the average planned caloric intake was 1,481 calories a day, which is a level usually recommended for weight loss. A lot of people recommend 1,500 calories, but what we don't realize is that 1,500 calories for most people is just the basic metabolic rate, especially women. That's like the bare minimum amount of energy you need if you are in bed all day, laying down. But the thing is, most of us who are suffering from HA are not in bed all day. We're actually the opposite. Those who have hypothalamic amenorrhea or live a very active lifestyle also tend to move a lot and go up and exercise and that takes up a lot of calories. Actually the 2000 calorie um, allotment per day that we see almost everywhere and hear almost everywhere is based on a survey that was done and what was found is that those women at the time tended to under report the amount of food that they were eating. Actually, women burn about 2,500 calories. That's women who are active throughout the day, meaning they walk around their house, do house chores, exercise a couple times a week, and have a healthy hormonal cycle. They actually need about 2,500 calories a day, which kind of seems like a lot, but most women, when you track what they're eating, those who don't diet and have a normal healthy cycle, eat about 2,500 calories or somewhere between 2,000 and 2,500. So what happens when we are eating too little food, too little calories, AKA 1,500 calories, so that's 1,000 calories off, right? our brain, this little area of our brain called the hypothalamus, can actually sense how much energy and how many calories that we are eating a day. And when it senses that we are too much in a deficit, it starts to prioritize the more vital organs, such as fueling the brain, fueling the organs, fueling the heart. Menstrual cycles are not a very important thing when it comes to prioritizing energy. However, menstrual cycles are extremely important for overall health and that's a video that I will make next time. But this time I'm just gonna talk about the five factors. I can't say that I relate to eating 1500 calories a day. I definitely did eat over that amount of calories per day before I went into the recovery all-in process. 
but what I can say is that for the amount of activity that I was doing, I definitely was not eating enough to sustain everything as well as a healthy cycle of hormones. Which brings us to the next category of exercise. Many women with HA exercise what the average person would call a lot but not everyone. So there's a couple graphs here. The graph on the right shows the range of exercise amounts in days per week and hours per day. It's highly likely that someone exercising two hours a day, seven days a week will have hypothalamic amenorrhea. But there are plenty of women afflicted who exercise much less than that. In addition, exercise intensity on the left is often increased when someone has HA compared with when periods are normal. So if you're somebody who likes to run six to 10 miles every single day, seven days a week, your body is going to be extremely stressed out and also it would probably be hard to keep refueling. That's why you'll see athletes that have to train very, very hard have to eat a lot of food and you'll notice that they don't look like the shreddest, the most lean, the most like skinny bikini model ever like they have the muscle they have fat over their muscle as well they have enough energy to sustain not only their activity but also their body which is important to note so i definitely did exercise a lot and i actually exercised a lot more before i had this small inkling in my mind that maybe i should start addressing this whole no period thing so before this, I was doing Ashtanga yoga every single day, which is traditional practice for an Ashtanga yogi, but it is a very dynamic athletic type of yoga flow and does use up a lot more energy in the body than just a normal restorative or vinyasa class. Before that, I was also doing a lot of high intensity workouts because I just love exercise, you know? It's not even to burn anything. I felt like my body was nice. I felt like I liked my body at that time. It was strong, it was athletic, and I just loved moving it so much. But I knew that I had to decrease in the intensity because I could not keep up with fueling for all that activity as well as my own body. So by decreasing my amount of exercise other than yoga, I thought I would be able to conserve energy. But what happened was that I was less hungry because I wasn't doing as intense workouts. So my, the amount of food that I ate decreased with my intuitive signals. The only problem with that is that Ashtanga yoga is still pretty demanding, so it still did use up more energy and I wasn't, again, keeping up with the amount of energy burned through that as well as the amount of energy that was needed to heal my body. So the third is weight and weight loss. People think that only somebody who is severely underweight can be afflicted by hypothalamic amenorrhea, but it's totally not true. 33% of respondents in this little survey had a BMI less than 18.5, but there were also people who had a BMI over 22. Weight loss was actually a more common finding. 82% of the respondents to the survey had lost at least 10 pounds prior to acquiring HA. And this is a huge one. Think about our bodies out in the wild, out in nature. Imagine if we just lost 10 pounds in a couple weeks or in a couple months. In those situations, that would normally happen when there's starvation and not enough food. So that's probably what our bodies are thinking when we're going through this. They're like, oh my gosh, there's all this weight loss. I need to conserve all this energy. I need to stop ovulating. We need to just save up. We need to survive. So it's in survival mode with that weight loss. I can say that I was at a heavier weight before when I had a healthy cycle. And then throughout college and finding fitness, I definitely lost some weight and it became more lean, but I was in a healthy BMI range. So I thought, I'm healthy. I wasn't really considered underweight, but I definitely was at around that 18, 19 BMI. My body did not look unhealthy and I definitely felt healthy. I felt like I was fueling myself, but the reality is sometimes our bodies want something different than what our minds want. And it's important to just humble yourselves down to what our bodies are actually asking for because it's true that not everybody is going to have the exact body they want or we're not all gonna look like the people that we see on social media and in the magazines. We only have our body that innately tells us what is wrong and what it needs to fix it. So when I read this book, there was a portion in it that said, if you've been restricting your eating and or using exercise to control your body size for most or all of your adult life, you might not know what your set point weight looks like. In this case, you could look to close family members to get a rough idea of where your body might prefer to be, but this is assuming that 
the family member also eats freely and is not stuck in the diet or exercise mentality. I have two sisters who don't really exercise that much, but they have always been like healthy and not overweight and not completely underweight. Um, I asked them what their BMI was because I knew that both of them were having very normal cycles and they're both around the 22 range, which is the BMI that is the sweet spot for having a normal cycling period. Of course, there are going to be people who have BMIs higher or lower than that and still have their period, so it's different for everyone, right? But 22 is generally where Dr. Rinaldi and her team found that women would regain their period back, 22 to 23. So while BMI doesn't necessarily dictate HA or the resumption of periods, it definitely is a good marker to be within the 22 to 23 BMI range. So the next category is stress. It's really common knowledge that an acute stressful period, such as loss of a family member or a bad breakup, can cause a loss of a period. But the hormones that result from chronic stress are known to also shut down the hypothalamus, which by this point we already know can control which controls the production of LH, FSH, estrogen. Those are the female hormones that are really important. Not the only ones, but they're they are some of the really important female menstrual hormones. It's important to realize that many people who have HA deal with constant stress from trying to live up to the goals we set for ourselves, often including eating perfectly and daily exercise. I honestly think that the exercise part and the daily stress part was a huge thing for me in my HA. Not only do I make YouTube videos and I'm on social media, but I also am a part-time student on the side and I've also been working as a clinical dietitian and also like other things as well, as well as having like a personal life, family, friends, a significant other, and just being in different living situations has definitely caused my body a lot more stress than I knew. And while I was doing yoga and meditating, some things are not more powerful than fixing the underlying cause, which is just having a lot of activities and having a lot of pressure on myself. So that I can totally relate to. And since then, I've been cutting down, I've been slowing down. I've been trying to take things less seriously. I've been trying to have a lot more time for myself and it's feeling really, really good to just have more self-care and have less activities to do. So those people who are very active, very high strong, very type A perfectionist type of people um, might be more susceptible to losing their period because it does cause very small but chronic amounts of stress that the hypothalamus can detect. And the last category is, of course, genetics. Mutations have been found in a number of proteins that are responsible for the regulation of the menstrual cycle in women with HA. This suggests a potential susceptibility to a loss of periods. However, I'd like to point out that just because there are some genes that have been found to be different with women who have HA, it's the same thing as saying that diabetes can be due to genetics as well. And heart disease and kidney disease, we all have some type of susceptibility to these kind of diseases or illnesses but it is up to us to create the right environment for healing and the right environment for maintaining a healthy body so while some people might be more susceptible to losing their periods they still have the same chance of getting their period back and keeping their period back just by being a little bit more diligent with taking care of their body and fueling properly i would say that this also applies to me not that any of my family members had ha but i do tend to lose weight and gain weight very easily so if i'm not careful then i can lose weight if i'm not eating enough which maybe makes that um a genetic factor but I, I don't know I don't know for sure genetics um, and the way that you know the bodies of other women in your family react and how they perform is also another thing to think about if you are considering the fact that maybe you have hypothalamic amenorrhea a combination of some of these five factors not all of them are usually the culprit of hypothalamic amenorrhea loss of periods or the female athlete triad what's good is that once these are recognized mindset and lifestyle choices can be modified to overcome the signals being shut down and to help you restore your period again. So if you're interested in learning more, make sure you check out No Period Now What. The first chapter of No Period Now What is actually free. You can download it. So maybe you think that you only need to read the first chapter and some people really only do and then the rest they can learn from like podcasts and 
reading articles and like watching YouTube videos, at least you'll have the first chapter available for you. Um, and it goes over a lot, such as the science of hormones and what stats look like for women who had HA versus after they had recovered. So there's a lot in there that's really, really useful um, that I think you would benefit from if you or a loved one are experiencing this, so make sure you check it out. This video isn't sponsored in any way by No Period Now What, and I'm not doing any promotional work with them. I just really think that this is an invaluable resource that has helped me personally and has inspired me to share this information with you. So with that, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something from it and I hope that you're having a wonderful morning, noon, day or night wherever you are and I'll see you next time. Bye!